even though mine is fairly empty because you watched the video, we need to fill in which one? The, this one down here, right? This is the one we need to figure out. Um, now, before I do that one, do I want to do these ones first? Yeah, I want to do these ones first, actually. Let's do the 15.2B. There's only two graphs on this page that we're going to do. And then, don't let me forget, we'll go back and do that other graph on the other page. Okay? Capiche? So, you need to tell me what you learned about graphing. First off, let's see, we've got some stuff. We've got some steps. Get the log alone. Then change to exponential form. Get x alone. Choose values for y and graph, including a dotted vertical line asymptote. However, I prefer a highlighter asymptote. So, yeah, I have highlighters and such if you need them. So, what did you learn? Let's see. If I were to take this, describe the transformations first. It's easier to analyze the equation in its log form. Okay? So, here's log form. What is h? Negative 7. Negative 7. What does that mean? It's a shift how? Left 7. That also tells you my asymptote, which is at negative 7, like that. <coughs> Excuse me. What's the equation of the asymptote? X equals negative 7. Now, I am particular. If you do not put the x equals, it is wrong because it is not a line. It's just a number. Okay? Um, all right. A couple other things. Do you notice that I said shift left 7, not shift left negative 7? I'll get a lot of people that will say, oh, it's a shift of negative 7. It's not a shift of negative 7. It's a shift of 7 in a negative direction. That's a different statement. Okay, that's like saying I went and ran a mile during PE or I ran a negative mile during PE. Don't tell me I ran a negative mile. <clears throat> it was a mile. It may have been to the left, which was a negative direction, but it was still a positive mile because my legs are telling me that. So um, your movement is always a positive value. However, the left or right is what determines whether it was a negative or a positive direction. Okay. All right, so we know H is negative 7. What is K? Um, negative 2. Which is what? Down. A shift down 2? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. It is easiest to describe the transformation before you do any changing around of the log. Did I explain that on Friday in the video? Yes, no? Because once you start moving everything around, it's harder to pick out what H and K is. Where did H end up? Where did K end up? It's easier to just pick out H and K first and then move on. All right? There is no A value to worry about. A is technically 1, which means there is no vertical change at all. It's the same as the parent function of this. Yes? Yes. Okay. What do I do on my XY chart? Let's see. H was my asymptote. Yes? Yes. So what do I do with my XY chart? What goes in the middle? Negative 2. On which side? On the Y side, right? Because everything with these graphs is exactly the same, but exactly opposite. You did watch the video. <laughs> okay, negative 2, I'm going to fill in negative 1 and 0, and negative 3 and negative 4, and I'm going to go from there. Now, how do I start plugging in Y values? I have to change things around first, don't I? Mm -hmm. I need to get X by itself. So if I need to get X by itself, just like I did in these notes back here, the 15.1B notes, what do I have to do to get X by itself? Add 2. That's my starting place. So that gives me Y plus 2 is equal to log X plus 7. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my log is by itself, so now what? Go to, get the log alone, go to exponential form. Now, a lot of times people get messed up when the log isn't on the left. 
So if you're going to get confused at all going to exponential form, write log of x plus 7 on the left and then y plus 2 on the right. Sometimes that helps make the change a little bit more clear. All right, what's my base? 10. 10. How do I know? Log itself is 10. Because a log with no base written is known as a what? Anyone remember? Common log, which means it has a base of 10. Again, that was that thing on the bottom of the front page that I said was so important and everyone forgets it right here. Remember that? Okay, anyways. Uh, so I have base 10. What's my exponent? 10 to the y plus 2. y plus 2 is equal to, and x isn't quite by itself yet. I'm going to subtract 7. 10 to the y plus 2 minus 7 equals x. Yes? Yeah. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to treat it kind of like I would if these were x values. I'm going to plug things in the exact same way. So let's see. 10 to the... Now there's more than one thing going on in that exponent, so i got to put parentheses there. Parentheses. I'm going to start with 0 plus 2 Close my parentheses so that my calculator knows that the minus 7 is not a part of the exponent. And I hit equals, and I get 93. That's a large number, isn't it? Yes. I may get large numbers. That's okay. Now, do I need to retype the whole thing in to plug in negative 1? No. I can just use this left arrow and arrow back and change that 0 to a negative... Oh, See when I typed in the negative, how it just kind of deleted it? I have to actually insert, so I have to hit second, INS, and it'll put a 1 in there. If I just keep typing, it's going to type over stuff. So let's see, negative 1, that gives me 3. All right, now we're into something I can actually graph. And now I'm going to go back and change the negative 1 to a what? Negative 2, and I get negative 6. And then negative 3, negative 6.9, and negative 4, negative 6.99. Can I round it off to negative 7? Mm -hmm. No, why? Oh, because that's, the precise. Cause that's where the asymptote is. And I can never equal 7. Right. So, the tricky part with these guys is... The x and y values are backwards of what you think they are, right? You want to look for negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 for your x values, but those aren't the x values, they're the y values. So 93, 0, I can't plot, right? Way off my graph. 3, negative 1, that one I can. Negative 6, negative 2, that one I can. Negative 6.9, negative 3, and negative 6.99, negative 4. So we have something that has a very steep change right there. It has a quick change, and that's what my graph looks like. Which one is all real numbers now? Is it my domain or my range? The range. Why? Because everything is flipped. <clears throat> because everything is flipped. Everything is opposite. Oh, another way I could look at that is up and down, there's no boundaries. It's only left and right that there's a wall that we can't cross. So what does that mean about my domain? My domain is what? Greater than negative 7. What is greater than negative 7? X is. X is greater than negative 7. Can it be X is greater than or equal to negative 7? No. no. Why not? Because can't, can't, like, can't equal the asymptote. Okay? So-so? Yes. So why was this on a separate day of notes? Because log has a base of 10. Because there's no base, pretty much. And if you look at the next example, we have a natural log. So it's the same process. We're just showing you what to do with the natural log and with the common log. Okay? All right, so transformation. What is my H value? One. One. What is my K value? Four. Four. So H being 1 means I have a shift how? Uh, right. right 1. And K equals 4 means I have a shift up 4. Up four. Which one is my asymptote? 
one, right? H is my asymptote, right? Um, yeah. So it goes right there, and the equation of it is x equals 1. What goes in the middle of my y values on my xy chart? 4. Again, fill in your values around so we can see what's going on there. And now, am I ready to plug numbers in? No. No. That was a really terrible asymptote drawing job. Do you see how terrible that was? Because this graph is so tiny here, this almost looks like it's at 1.5, doesn't it? That was really terrible. Don't draw as terribly as I do, please. Okay, um, I gotta change some stuff around so I can plug in. So what do I need to do first? Subtract four. So that gives me y minus four equals the natural log of x minus one. All right, I'm ready to go to exponential form. Again, it's easier to go to exponential form when your log is on the left. <clears throat> so if you need to switch it around like that, switch it around like that. All right, what's my base? E. To the what power? E. Equals? E. I'm going to add one. E to the y minus 4 plus 1 is equal to x. All right, now I can start plugging in. Now, Something to remember about E. E is an ugly number, which means that whenever you do any calculations with E, guess what? It's a decimal. You're going to get ugly numbers. So I should expect all of these to be decimals because E itself is a decimal. Wait, right yes. And where do you want it rounded to? Um, let me think about that. Hang on just a minute. Um, e to the 2 minus 4, close my parentheses so that it knows the next number is not a part of the exponent. And I get 1.135. Let's just do one digit past the decimal for now. So 1.1. 1 .1. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the 2 to a 3. And I get 1.4. Yeah. I'm going to say round it to one digit unless you're in a situation like this. Because if you round this to one digit, it looks exactly the same as the one above it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I need to change the 3 to a 4. This one might be a nice number. Yes. Why is that one a nice number? Because it's 0. Because 4 minus 4 is 0 and e to the 1st <laughs> is, or e to the 0 is 1 plus 1 is 2. That's the only one that's going to be a nice number. Uh, 3.7, and then change it to a 6, 8.4. And let's plot our points. 1.12, 1 1.4, 3, and again, those are all kind of smushed in there a little bit. We just have to approximate there. 2, 4, 3.7, 4.4. And then 8.46, so that's going to be around here. I typically don't like plotting numbers off the graph, but that one is so close to being on the graph, I think we're okay. The reason why I don't like plotting numbers off the graph is because you lose accuracy when you start having to scale things by uh, manually. All right, what's my domain? X is greater than 1. What's my range? <coughs> All real numbers. Any questions there? That should be no different than what you did on Friday, correct? All right, let's go back and do that problem that I skipped. Right here. And let's talk about the transformation. First off, there is an H value, and the H value is what? Zero. Nope. <coughs> no, 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 no. Negative 1. Which means what? I have a shift, how? Left, one. Which means I have an asymptote right, let's see if I can draw better here. Eh, marginally better. Um, and my asymptote's equation is x equals negative one. What else do I have as far as a transformation? 
I have an A value. And I notice two things about that A value. I notice it's negative, which tells me what? Nope. It is a vertical reflection. Please specify vertical. And it's two, which means it's what? A vertical stretch of two. Okay, so when my A value is negative, there are two components to it usually. You've got your reflection component and your stretch or compression component. When is it just a reflection without a stretch or a compression? If it's negative one. Okay. All right. So let's see. What goes in the middle of my Y values? Zero. zero. Why zero? Because that's the value of K. Because my K value is zero. There's no K value out here, so it's just zero. I'm going to fill in negative 1 and negative 2, and then positive 1 and positive 2. Has anything changed with this problem yet? Is anything different than the other problems? This Not yet. The only difference is going to become, be in getting x by itself. That's the only place there's going to be a difference. So getting x by itself, I need to first get the log by itself. So what do I need to do? Oh, divide. Divide by negative 2. That gives me y over negative 2, you could also call that negative 1 half y if you wanted to, equals log base 2 of x plus 1. Is my log by itself? So I'm ready to go to exponential form. Now remember, if this is confusing for you this way, write the log on the left. Sometimes just flipping it around like that makes it a lot clearer for people. So what's my base? 2. What's my exponent? <coughs> y over negative 2. That's the exponent. Equals x plus 1. So what am I going to do? Subtract 1. So I have 2 to the y over negative 2 minus 1 equals x. That's the only place that things get different when you have that coefficient. So if I want to go plug these in now, I have 2 to the parentheses. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. Close my parentheses. That's what my exponent's going to look like. It's always going to have this divided by negative 2 because the exponent has the divided by negative 2. Make sure you close your parentheses so that your calculator knows that minus 1 is not a part of the parentheses and I get a value of 1 as my answer. So, so? Thank you. Um, okay, now I'm going to go change that negative 2 to a what? And be careful, since both of those are negative 2, it's the numerator of that. I'm going to change it to a negative 1. That gives me 0 0.4. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go change the negative 1 to a what? Zero. zero, and I get zero. Now I change the zero to a one, <clears throat> and I get negative zero point three, and now change it to a two, and I get negative zero point five. The rest of this is exactly the same. So really, the only difference with that or with that coefficient was in this process here. So let's see, 1, negative 2, 0 0.4, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 0 0.31, and negative 0 0.52. Is the graph going by 1 or 2? Um, I think it's good. I would assume going by 1s. I'm counting it as 1s. Since I can't read it, I'm counting it as 1s. So this is a more gentle curve. What's my domain? X is what? Negative. Greater than what? Negative. negative one. And my range? Any questions there? OK. 
Okay. Now, do you feel a little bit more comfortable going in and filling those, what was it, two problems, I think, on last night's homework that had the coefficient? You just got to mess around with it in this phase right here. Okay? Yes? It's a fraction. Do you want it to be, do you want it, do you want it to turn into decimal? <coughs> Where? Like, let's say A is one half. Over here, leave it as one half. But once you get calculating, it's easier to graph a decimal than a fraction. So go to decimal form in your XY chart. Okay. Okay? All right. Happy studying.